welcome to On The Chain. Now, John Dean's prediction right here, right? The case against Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson is over. Over. That's it. It was over the day it was filed. There's no way the SEC meets its burden, can meet its burden. The SEC must prove that two executives had actual knowledge XRP was a security or reckless in not knowing. Reckless. So what is what is what are all these things? What does this mean? Right? So they, they either had to have actual knowledge or they had to be reckless. So let's see what we got. So John Deaton continues to make sure we're on the right thread. In order to prove recklessness, the SEC must prove a reasonable person would have known XRP was a security because it was so clear and obvious to anyone at that time. Now, let's look, think about the, the time and date, the year of this. So John says, okay, let's review some of the evidence. October 2012, Perkins Coy Memo concluded XRP was not a security. Now, Ripple had actually hired them to do this whole analysis. They did their due diligence. They paid money. They went to the best of the best in the industry uh, to really check this out to see, hey, what you know? Let's get a, a, some opinion on this, some smart legal opinion on what the outcome would be. 2012. Now, until April of 2018, so we're talking about more than six years later. The SEC allowed staff, including enforcement lawyers, to trade and own crypto. Get this, including XRP, without any restrictions. So. Gary, the G-man Gensler, Daddy G, is now saying, and the SEC with the lawsuit that was dropped, uh, you know, prior to by by Clayton, right? So we go all the way back. They dropped the lawsuit and the statement and claim, going back to what they need to prove, is that they should have known that XRP was a security. And Gary Gensler has come out and said it's so clear. They they should have known it would, but how is it that during that six year period, all of these individuals working at the SEC could then buy what they're considering an unregistered security? I mean, it's, it's kind of ludicrous, right? So June 13, 2018, the SEC legal memo analyzing with regards to XRP as a security, SEC enforcement lawyers do not underscore do not conclude XRP as a security because there's no enforcement recommendation made. Six years later, six years after 2012, obviously a couple years, three years before they end up filing a lawsuit. Now, June 14, 2018, this is a great analysis. It's a great breakdown. Uh, Hinman said Ethereum is no longer a security. Interesting. Right, because originally they came out and said that was his personal opinion, and now we come to find out that in fact it wasn't his personal opinion. He was actually speaking on behalf of the agency that he was working for. Now he's saying that Ethereum wasn't a security because it's sufficiently decentralized, since it can be argued the XRPL is at least as decentralized, if not more. It's reasonable, it's reasonable to believe ongoing sales of XRP from 2018 forward were lawful, right? So, so here Hinman has his speech. Again, it was originally said personal, and now it's professional opinion, saying that Ethereum is not a security. It's sufficiently decentralized, but a reasonable person could argue that the XRPL is also decentralized, if not more decentralized than Ethereum. And therefore, that reasonable person would, it would then be reasonable for them also to believe that if you were continuing to sell XRP from the moment Hinman made that speech, that from 2018 forward, at least at the minimum, it's lawful. It's, it's not to be considered a security. So it's, it's kind of like chaos a little bit, right? 
So, so this was back in 2018, but I like how, so Dia was saying, God bless Nancy Wotas, truth teller, partner at Cooley, member of the venture capital working group who submitted the safe harbor memo to Bill Hinman, Wendy Moore, partner, Perkins Coy. Why isn't Ripple, right? If ETH, why not Ripple? I mean, it's just, it's just not rational. They've kind of lost rational thought process somewhere in all of this. So then John Dean posts August 20, 2018, meeting between Katz and Garland House with guess what? Oh, that's interesting. Clayton and Hinman. So Brad yells out ripples in purgatory because of the lack of clarity over XRP. Now that's interesting because if either one of them had really thought that they thought that XRP was a security, why is it here, uh, Dean is saying, neither Clayton nor Hinman informed Garland House or Ripple that they or the SEC believe XRP. So they have an opportunity, right? They've spoken out about Ethereum. <clears throat> now, 2018, these are month, at, month after month here, right? So a lot was happening in that summer of 2018. Now, neither Clayton nor Hinman informed Garland House or Ripple that they or the SEC believe XRP is actually a security. So now, this is where and I, Dean has done a phenomenal job piecing all this stuff together because now, fast forward uh, six more months, Coinbase goes to the SEC, January of 19, informs the SEC that it has concluded XRP is not a security and they're going to list XRP the following month. So February 2019, Coinbase is going live with XRP. You know what happened? The SEC said nothing. Zero. <laughs> like silence is acquiescence, right? So then what happens? XRP gets listed on Coinbase in 2019. So we forward. So January 1, 2020. I don't know why a tweet's gone here, but Baylor Inc., a financial investment firm, filed an ethics. You guys probably remember this. They filed an ethics declaration with the SEC assuring the SEC that Baylor would only trade digital assets generally accepted in the financial industry as non-securities. Now, which uh, three assets did they mention? Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. This is January 1 of two years ago. This isn't like ancient history. This is all unfolding just in the past couple years. So John continues in summary, the 2012 Perkins Coy opinion letter destroys the SEC's chance of proving Garling House and Larson actually believed XRP as security. And this is I mean, if anyone has ever put any, you know, thing together, John has put such an amazing, amazing summary together. <laughs> so now we continue. So if SEC enforcement lawyers, the experts who determine what is or isn't a security, couldn't make the case, XRP was definitely a security as late as 2018, there's no way it can prove that Larson and Garling House were reckless in 2013. So. There's no way they can make the case. They've already, you know, they've obviously already stepped on themselves. They've kind of destroyed their opportunities. They want to go back to 2013, yet in 2012, Perkins and Coy had this nice opinion letter. So why, after hiring the best in the in the in the business, legal business, to analyze things like this, why would we, you know, think uh, that they would be acting unreasonably. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, it's outlandish. So John Dean continues, says, in fact, Ripple can prove the opposite by showing that it wasn't even obvious to the SEC that XRP was a security by offering this up. Now, obviously that the SEC has multiple options over the years to say, Hey, you know what? Stop. Including when, Ripple invested in 
MoneyGram and transferred a significant amount of XRP to MoneyGram. Now, in order to do all of that, the SEC would have to have been informed and they would have had to have approved it. And they did it knowing that MoneyGram was then going to sell XRP. And in fact, MoneyGram at the time was utilizing the ODL. They were using RippleNet. They're using the ODL. They're using on-demand liquidity for foreign currency exchange successfully and saving money, which is one of the reasons why when they parted ways, mainly because of this suit, uh, you see that now MoneyGram has pursued the Stellar Foundation and XLM. So let's move on. John Dean, Clayton and Hinman didn't communicate. XRP was a security during meetings until four months before the lawsuit. So all this time went by. The SEC allowed its staff to own or trade XRP without restriction up until 2019. I mean, you look at this and you're like, it's unconscionable. It allowed MoneyGram to sell XRP to retail holders. Through exchanges, we just referenced MoneyGram. Thus, Garlinghouse and Larson can prove they didn't believe XRP was a security. They can also prove the SEC itself wasn't convinced XRP was a security. The final nail in the SEC's proverbial coffin, I mean case, is proving what most independent market participants believe. Now, they also, the SEC came out and actually really went after the XRP community. And, but John says, you proved that by offering the Coinbase and Baylor evidence. Coinbase, with its sophisticated securities lawyers, concluded way, way back in 19 that XRP was not a security. And they even communicated that to the SEC when they listed XRP, and the SEC was silent, silent. Now, what, what was their intention? I mean, was the SEC trying to entrap? Coinbase was the SEC building such a strong case that it was just a open, shut, and sealed case where they knew they had the goods. They were going to prove that Ripple was selling an unregistered security, and the case would be over in a matter of months. But no, that's not what happened because they just were silent on all these things that were transpiring with Ripple and with XRP, all these years, all the movement of money within the retail space, silent. So Baylor, a typical market participant, was very concerned about digital assets potentially being unregistered securities. And that's why they went to the SEC and said they would only trade digital assets that were accepted within the industry as non-securities. And guess what? The SEC was silent. Silent, no method, no, no methodology, no mention of anything, just silent, silent acquiescence. And then John says, at this point, the defense rests. It's over. It's like, it's over and done. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.